marriage. Okay. How sex affects dating and marriage is very important for us to understand that sex will affect dating and marriage. Okay, number now look at this picture first. Male and female differences. Boys give love to get sex. And girls give sex to get love. Now what does that mean? Because many guys want to have love, I want to have sex. So they will give love. They would say, oh, I love you. I care about you. I dream about you. I think about you all the time. And if you love me, let's go to bed together. You know, and he would please her in all the ways. I will marry you. I will, I will love you. I will do all the things you want me to do. I will give you a lot of money. So he would do all kinds of things to please her so that he can have sex with her. But it doesn't mean that he is committed to her. Later, he might say, well, you're nagging me. You're... Because after the sex relationship, the sexual relationship, then the girl will start to ask him, when do we get married? Uh, are, are you going to get married? How can we get the money to get married? Are you going to take care of me? And then, then a guy will say, now you're nagging me. You're asking me all these questions. It's bothersome. It's, don't ask me all these questions. You know, when the time comes, I'll marry you. And then he gets frustrated. And then he sees another girl. And then he says, wow, this girl has a... You know, I have fun with this girl and I don't have fun with you anymore. Because once two persons have commitment, then there are responsibilities. This is something we must understand very well. Before two persons are committed, it's just having fun. But once the two persons are committed, then there need to be responsibilities. And then if the girl finds that the guy has no sense of responsibility, then the girl would, find, would be very frustrated and he would she would nag him. And then he got very frustrated and then he says, Now I don't love you anymore. You have, you, you're no fun. You, you're always nagging me. You are like my mother now. So we want to realize that uh, sex is not a good way to hold a relationship. When the guy has sex with the girl, then he thinks he can do anything and the girl will still run after him. Then he won't show love anymore. He would just want to have sex. Every time he sees her, he wants to have sex. He just wants satisfaction. It's not, it's not love. It's just getting something. And then for many girls, they, in order want for them to be able to get this guy so that the guy will marry, her, she would give sex in order to get his love, but it won't because after the sexual relationship, then the guy thinks that, you know, I've got what I want, you know, and uh, you have to chase after me now. And then he might change his mind and he, you know, uh, he might stop showing his love for her anymore and it would have problems. So this is very important to understand. Guys, give love so that he can have sex. They just want to have sex. That's a motivation of many men. Okay, number one, men generally have strong sex drives and one motivation for them to date is to get sex. So th the motivation of many men, now you can ask many men to ask them, is that true? Is that true? When you date, do you think of touching her body and hug and kiss and have sex? Is that what you're thinking about? Many men will tell you honestly, yes, that's what they're thinking about. Number two, men give fake love to get sex. I put a fake here. It's not real love. Love is to do good things to the person, to bless the other person, to make the other person feel good, to appreciate the person and to make the person happy in her, her whole lifetime. That is real love. But men will give fake love. They just want to please the other person so that he can have sex. And women give sex to get love. And many men seek more body contact and sex in dating. And women want body contact for comfort and love. So the motivation of men and women are different. When men seek body contact, they want to have, more, have sex, have more and more body contact. They want to have fondling and then have sex. And then the women want 
body contact too. She loves, she wants the guy to hug her and kiss her, and she feel good about it. It's for comfort and love mainly, not mainly for sex. It's for her. It's for comfort and for love. But for the guy, he's thinking about the next step. How can I have sex with her? So the motivation of both sexes are generally different. And then three, having sex before the marriage is fornication. First Corinthians six sixteen, or do you not know that he who is joined to a harlot is one body with her? For the two, uh, he says, shall become one flesh. So. Even when a person has sex with a harlot, with a prostitute, it's already one body with her, because the two shall become one flesh. So we don't want to have sex with anyone. We just want to have sex in marriage. Sex is something God sees as a unity of two persons. So, for us to please God, we want to have sex only in the marriage, not. Before marriage and not extra marriage, not outside marriage. And fornication causes God to be angry. The persons involved will lose the favor of God and will give footholds to the devil, and the devil will steal, kill, and destroy every part of his of their lives. So fornication causes God to be angry. He doesn't like that because the two persons have wrong motives. They don't want to seek God's will. And so God is angry with them. And then, now if they repent, God will forgive them. But still, they have left a black mark in their life. It will affect the relationship. And the persons involved will lose the favor of God because God is pleased with us when we obey Him. When we disobey Him, then God is not pleased with us. With us. But when a person repents, he can still get the favor of God. But then. He will lose something. The, the, you know, what he has done will affect the future marriage. Premarital sex will affect the relationship, the way they relate to each other, and also the marriage. And it will also give the foothold to the devil, and the, the devil will still kill and destroy every part of his and her life. So, uh, the devil will attack and and. Uh, you know, cause problem in the relationship, maybe cause the man to have interest in another girl, uh, and also cause them to yell at each other because after the sex sexual relationship, the girls want the guy to marry her and to love her and to be with her every day, but she finds that now the guy loses interest, and so she would have hurt feelings. And might have hatred, and then the guy would have frustration with her, so it would ruin the relationship. Instead of the pure, joyful relationship, now they are suffering, and and the devil will steal the relationship, will steal something from their life, and kill their spiritual life, and destroy every part of their life. And number five, many men think that having sex with a woman is gaining something. Actually, they will lose many things. You know, many men think that if I have sex with someone, uh, I've gained something. And and then some men would even boast they have sex with so many women, so, but they did not realize that this is offensive to God. They will lose many things. They will lose the favor of God. God is not pleased with them if they think that sex is just for fun, just to have sex with anyone. And then they lose a clear conscience. They don't have a peaceful conscience anymore, and they lose their spiritual strength and the most wonderful plan of God. God has a most wonderful plan. If we love Him, obey Him, and serve Him, we'll follow this perfect plan. But when a person commit fornication, he has he will fall from this perfect, most perfect plan, and he will also lose a perfect marriage. And he will lose the trust of other people, and people don't trust him anymore. And he can lose his trust of the church, of the pastor. So it will affect his whole future. And some people th think, if I don't have sex with her, she might have sex with another person. Now, if the woman wants to have sex with other woman, then you don't want to marry that woman. And if the person is chosen by God, he will not run away. 
So it's very important to realize that the person prepared by God will not run away. We don't want to keep the relationship with sex. And many men think of having sex with her. Her date is not because he wants to keep the relationship. He just wants to have sex just for satisfaction, for enjoyment. It's not really for, for love. So I hope uh, we should educate the women and the girls to understand that when a guy wants to have sex with you, it doesn't mean he loves you. It just means that he wants to use your body. He wants to have sex with you and he might leave you after that. So don't think that a guy wants to have sex because of love. It's not necessary because of love. So we want people to understand that. And also guys should understand that having sex is not gaining something. If they lose the favor of God, they lose a lot of things. Okay, number six. six. When a woman gets pregnant before marriage, her date might leave her and she might become a single mother and it will lead to serious problems so uh, getting parent pregnant is another serious problem and it would cause serious problems and also it's very important not to consider abortion because abortion is killing someone it's killing something it's murder it's very very serious so if someone is pregnant before marriage, he sh uh, she should still keep the baby. And if it's impossible to have the baby, then uh, she can find someone to adopt the baby. Okay, and then number seven, premarital sex will hurt both persons and the future can be destroyed and they will bring problems uh, to the family, work and church. So premarital sex will hurt both persons and the future can be destroyed. The future of the woman can be destroyed because he could become a single mother and then uh, and the relationship doesn't work out and then she will feel shameful and a guy will also might might develop a habit of having sex with different girls and uh, and also God is not pleased with him so it would it can destroy the the whole life and God's plan for their life so it would bring, bring problem to the family, to the work, and to the church, and to the whole life. Number eight, people who have premarital sex with people in the church can bring the anger of God and serious consequences to the church. They have to be dealt with by the leaders of the church. So in a church, the pastor should educate all young people not to have sex with people and also be very careful if someone wants to have sex with them. If a guy chase after a girl and, and want to fondle her and to be intimate with her, she has to tell the pastor because he might be a wolf. Now he might say he believes in Jesus, but he wants to come to the church to steal girls, to find girls. So pastors have to be very careful and educate the people so that the people will not commit, the fornic commit fornication and also they should be careful that if they see someone who is very active chasing after girls and Christians should be educated not to chase after girls but to seek God's will when it's God's will God will arrange uh, the person to be attracted to us also okay number nine during dating when people kiss hug or fondle each other they can easily be aroused and want to have sex so Christians should be taught to have minimal minimum uh, minimal body contact when dating so when people fondle each other and kiss and hug then they want to go to the next step it's very natural so for dating I would suggest to people that not to have any intimate body contact at all no hugging no kissing now people will say this is terrible this is not dating but when people hug and kiss they will want to go to the next step it's inevitable every time it will happen like that when they kiss they keep you know they'll keep kissing for a long time and then they will start to fondle the other person so uh, Christians should be taught not to hug or kiss in dating they should find out God's will um, and instead of uh, 
uh, having intimate body contact and then that can lead to uh, sex. Uh, people need to understand that our body will respond to fondling. Every single person, even a person who really loves God, will still respond to fondling, to hugging and kissing. So when the body responds, then he wants to have sex. He or she wants to have sex. 10. Since there is a tendency for people to have sex even early in their life, Christians in the church should be educated about the seriousness of premarital sex early in their life. Now, because in many countries, even children have sex. Sometimes it could be sexual abuse, sometimes even by the family members, sometimes by uncles or some relative that people can have sex with and and this can ruin their life because this is not pleasing to God and so people need to realize that premarital sex is something God is not pleased with and it can ruin pers some people's life you know some people are sexually abused for years in the family or by some relative so people should be educated in a church if someone is abusing them sexually they should report to the pastor and to the police even if it is their parent that does it because what will happen is they will ruin ruin their whole life and there are many stories like that on the internet 11 even when people have learned the seriousness of fornication when they face temptation they easily forget everything they have learned the impulse easily makes them out of control so we need to understand that the sexual impulse is not something we can easily control with our mind. When people are hugging and kissing and fondling, they will forget about everything they've been, they have learned. Uh, so it's the only way is to run away. It's like Joseph when he was in Egypt. When the mistress tempted him, he ran away. So we have to run away when we are tempted instead of staying in the temptation so all all people should be educated in this so even children should be educated not to let people touch them easily uh, I, what I mean is uh, in a uh, uh, intimate way a sexual way if people just pat on the shoulder you know it's fine but then if they uh, do kissing and hugging uh, as a habit uh, that it can lead to problems okay so so people sex can affect dating and marriage and uh, and also after even after people get married they can have sex with other people when they find that the wife is not attractive anymore the wife always nags, and then uh, a man finds and a woman who is you know he finds her very attractive and then he would still have the ten temptation to have to commit adultery so we need to understand the temptation of the temptation of sex okay and uh, I have this Bible verse here 2nd Corinthians chapter 6 verse 14 do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers for what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness and what communion has light with darkness? And what accord has Christ with Belial? Or what part has a believer with an unbeliever? And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk among them. I will be their God and they shall be my people. Therefore come out from among them and be separate says the Lord do not touch what is unclean and I will receive you okay now this is a passage about uh, that Christians should not marry non-Christians now God let me come across a person one time on a trip and uh, somebody uh, saw that I was a Christian and she started to talk with me and then she asked me the opinion of this Bible verse and she 
has a preconcept. She said that do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. And she thinks that this passage talks about just business arrangement. Do not have business arrangement with non-Christians. And she thinks that it's not for uh, marriage. She says that if marriage is something so important, the Bible should be very clear to say that Christians should not marry a non-Christian. And I told her to look at the following uh, t uh, verses. And I, I said that it's not just about uh, working arrangement, you know, together with non-Christians, business arrangement with, with uh, non-Christians. But it talks about that relationship with non-Christian. And she was very unhappy. And then she refused to talk with me after that. that because she has a concept. Some people have a concept that uh, because they, they th uh, think that it's so uh, difficult if Christians have to marry Christians only. There are so many Christians who cannot find a, another Christians to marry. And so they want to marry anyone they come across, that there's someone they like. And then, and, and then she thinks that that would be much easier. And, you know, she said that she is using the uh, explanation of the Bible to support that. But she's not really supporting it. She is just saying, um, if it's for marriage, it has to be very, very clear. But this passage is actually very clear. Let's look at it now. And I think God lets me, let me come across this person to realize that there are people who see this passage and still insist that Christian can marry non-Christians. That this passage, is, this passage is only about business arrangement. So I, I will say this is about uh, mainly about marriage, but also other uh, deep cooperation with non-Christians. Okay, so do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Yoked is like two oxen working together. They are yoked together on the shoulder so that they will pull the plow together. So do not be equally unequally yoked with them. For what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness? So here, the Bible passage talk about that it's fellowship of righteousness, that we are the righteous person living under Christ with lawlessness. Someone is not following God. So what fellowship can we have with them? So here is talking about that it's not just business. In marriage, it is the deepest fellowship. Marriage is the deepest fellowship. Uh, and then if you know a Christian marries a non-Christian, he is fellowshipping, he is having a fellowship with someone who is uh, without the law of God, who is not following the, the commandments of God. And what communion has light with darkness, that we are following light, but the other person is following darkness. And what accord has Christ with Belial? Belial is a name for the devil. So Christ, what part you know, does he have with the devil? Or what part has a believer with an unbeliever that we cannot have this unity with them? And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? The temple of God cannot have communion, agreement with the idols. For you are the temple of the living God. We are the, we are the temple of living God. God lives in us. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk among them. So God will dwell in us and walk with us. And I will be their God and they shall be my people. So he wants to be our God and we, he wants us to be his people. Therefore come out from among them and be separate. So this is very clear. So come out from them. Be separate from them. Do not uh, mingle with them in a sense that do not have a close fellowship or communion with them. So for Christians, our closest friends should be with Christians. Now we can have, you know, we work with non-Christians. But when we do business, we should do business with Christians. And when we have deep cooperation or deep sharing, it should be with uh, Christians mainly. Now we can play tennis with non-Christians. We can 
you know, uh, we go to work and then there are a lot of non-Christians there. That's fine. But here is talking about a close fellowship, a deep relationship. So we want to be separate from the world. Says the Lord, do not touch what is unclean and I'll receive you. So when we don't touch an unclean thing and then God will receive us. And then 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 39, that um, a wife is bound by law as long as her husband lives. But if her husband dies, she is at liberty to be married to whom she wishes, only in the Lord. So here Paul talks about a wife is bound by law as long as her husband lives. So when her husband is alive, then she is bound by law. But if her husband dies, then she is at liberty to be married. Now it says here, to whom she wishes. So does it mean that we can marry anyone? You know, from the whole Bible, we, uh, you know, from the whole Bible, we see that it's not, you know, that we w want to marry anyone we want. Uh, because when we follow God's will, it will be uh, God's will that we follow. Uh, but then when a person loves God, then he wants God's will, then it will be the wish, you know, of Christians that we want to marry someone according to God's will. So this verse here, to whom she wishes, doesn't deny that we should find the person God has prepared for us. For instance, my wife that God has prepared for me is very special. It's someone God has planned for me. It's uh, if I uh, marry a wrong person, it could ruin my life and my ministry. So we want to uh, seek God's will. But then here, here is, he says, only in the Lord. So only someone in the Lord. Don't marry someone uh, who is not a Christian. Now this could create problem in some cultures. I know that in some cultures, uh, it seems that women cannot stay single. It seems that in many cultures, they think that a woman must be married, must find a someone to marry. If she cannot find a Christian, then she just marries a non-Christian. Now, this is the pressure from the society, not from God. But even many Christians have this value uh, that they believe that uh, Christian, you know, marry uh, women, women should not be single. So this is something I think we should not uh, follow. Uh, that in the Christian church we should teach people that uh, if we don't find someone who is a Christian, we should not get married. Uh, that way we can follow God. Because if a person marries a non-Christian, what happens is that family cannot follow God totally. And very often the person will be drawn, uh, dragged, away from Jesus. The other person would give pressure to him or her to f not to follow Jesus. So it, it's for our Christian life and for the unity of the family, for the growth in Jesus, we should marry someone who is a, a um, Christian. Now also in some cultures I know that if uh, a woman's husband dies, the Bible says she's at liberty to be married, so she can get married. But I know that in some cultures, women whose husband died cannot remarry, but men can remarry, but women cannot. Now this is not following the Bible, but because there are many places that they follow the culture. And sometimes the culture came from another religion. So we should follow the Bible and say that, uh, all Christians should marry non uh, should marry Christians and should never marry non Christians. And if sh he or she cannot find a Christian, then he should stay single. Now, when I went to Africa, many people asked me, uh, "Where is your mama? Where is mama?" They actually mean wife. You know, the wife they call mama, or uh, actually means mother. But then they. They, uh, they, they take it for granted that all women should be married and have children. So they call her mama. I said, we don't have children. 
So don't call her mama, please. She's not a mama. Just call her, and she uh, she doesn't mind people calling her her name. Uh, so they think that women should get married and should have children. So this is a um, you know a culture, not something the Bible teaches. And and then I I went to some other country that the woman whose husband died they can only you know be a widow and they cannot find work in that society because that work the country is not fair and then the, the widows have to depend on the church for help and and this is to me is not biblical so many people follow teachings that are not from the Bible okay now we continue with uh, the teaching to uh, about dating how people should find out God's will in dating and marriage so how can people find out God's will first Christians should not be trying by the effort to find a potential spouse he should get God let God guide him when we love God God will guide us so we should not try by our effort to find a potential spouse now some Christians they would be looking in a church and they say oh that beautiful woman that handsome man I want to date that person and then they would try to relate to that person now we should not uh, do this in God because God has a plan God has planned someone for us so we should not seek someone and we should not chase after people there are people in the church that they keep chasing after different girls and we should let God guide us pray to God and then be nice to everyone now if a person doesn't talk to people at all he will not have any friends but we relate to people and then people whom God has prepared for us will be attracted and will be drawn by God and we will be drawn by God also to the person so this is the work of God in guiding us to come together so I hope that we will you know will not use our uh, our own effort to find a spouse but pray to God now but many people don't believe that God will guide them they think that well uh, you have to do something yes I say I have to do something well, what we do is we love God we love people we care about everyone we're nice to everyone and then God will move our heart toward people whom God want us to be wants us to be with uh, to 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 marry and then also moves that person to have that same feeling toward us so I hope that we believe this I have heard people that says that they met their wife and then immediately they 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 feel they feel that that's the person their wife for them and then the wife also feel the same way so uh, we should ask God to guide us when someone finds he has some feelings that someone might be God's chosen spouse he should first pray to seek God's will so he should first pray to God and not just to chase after the girl he should not just let romantic feelings guide himself very often people are led by romantic feelings beauty or body shape of a person hunger to be loved hunger to be hugged low self-image sex drive hunger for money uh, to, uh, to find a spouse so we should not let romantic feelings guide us now in movies secular movies it's always you know someone sees a beautiful person and then he's attracted by that person and so that sets a like a, a model for many people to follow if they want to uh, find a spouse now that is not scriptural we don't want to be guided by romantic feelings because romance romantic feelings are not accurate very often because people when they see someone uh, attractive uh, it's natural that they are attracted by the person but it doesn't necessarily mean that the person is uh, God's chosen spouse for us so we we don't want to be led by romantic feelings now when we have the relationship with person eventually we'll have romantic feelings but don't let that feeling guide us we want to be guided by God even when we have this feeling uh, when we have a romantic feeling towards someone we don't want to let that feeling guide us okay and then um, 
sometimes uh, people guided by beauty or body shape of person you know person looks beautiful handsome or tall and body shape is very attractive uh, and, and many people say oh she's sexy and then she's attracted he, uh, he's attracted by the uh, body of the person or hunger to be loved some people want to be loved so they the first person that loves them then they are attracted by them and then uh, hunger to be hugged they want to be hugged they want to be touched or low self-image they think they are useless they don't have any value and then if someone really likes them and then they are attracted by that or sex drive they want to have sex with people or hunger for money someone has money and then they would chase after the person so we don't want to be attracted by look by other reasons only be attracted by God if we want to follow God because God has the best will for our life God is the one who can bless our whole life and if God wants to bless us he will give us the best now my first wife has passed away and God has chosen my first wife for me uh, it's you know when I look back it was very miraculous it was because of my first wife that God has prepared for me that I can go to uh, uh, overseas to study and then the pastor led me to understand the Lutheran teaching of the balance of the law and the gospel and this was very important for me there was this affect my whole ministry that the balance of the law and grace of God to to live in the love of God that was the teaching that I found that the Lutheran Church is very strong in and uh, so that God arranged me to be attracted to her and uh, that and also she has helped me in many ways she has helped me to be um, to be more decisive in the past I was not so decisive I could not make decisions easily and she was a person who can uh, you know who was very sharp in making decisions and she has a sharp mind and so God has prepared her for me and then uh, my when my first wife passed away I I just want to be a missionary I, at first I did not want to get married at all because I I was filled with the Holy Spirit. I don't want to spend time on marriage. But God has prepared for me, my person wife. And uh, at first I thought I would just take some luggage and then go to a country and then be a missionary from one place to another place. But I found that it uh, is impossible because the country is so polluted that when I stayed there, I went there to be a missionary uh, for a short time. I found that immediately my body was heavily affected by the the poor quality of the food and the water and uh, and so it doesn't work that way and then God has arranged this wife for me who loves me very much and who has uh, helped me in my ministry and my life and helped me to go to a higher level so even though in the past I thought that if I get married I will spend more time in marriage I don't want to spend the time I want to just spend the time with God but God has arranged someone uh, for me that that she can raise up my life to a higher level that my ministry go to a higher level so I hope that we'll all believe that and then if we cannot find someone then we want to trust in God and and enjoy God and have strength from God so that we will uh, be happy being single and uh, so that you know our life can be used by God and be raised by God to a higher level Okay, four, he should ask a pastor or a mature leader to counsel and guide him. Marriage affects our whole life. Christians should not rush into marriage. So we should find a pastor and a pastor should teach the people about dating and marriage. And then when, he, when the uh, people, uh, they, uh, actually we should educate all people. All the young people should be educated even children should be educated they should not have sex because I know that in some places even children have sex and then some children even start dating so they should understand that uh, children they're not mature they should learn to raise up their spiritual level their maturity and then seek God's guidance seek God's guidance before they will start dating 
and then they should be more mature before they they uh, uh, start to date so uh, and then when Christians uh, they have to you know that when they are interested in someone that's person the person might be someone arranged by God they should seek God's guidance instead of just saying wow that he likes me she likes me so I have to date her uh, we don't want to do that we want to seek guys God's guidance and we can ask the pastor or a mature leader to help us and he should learn to understand the differences between the male and female so he can relate to the person and and care all Christians should improve the life quality before we date and marry because in order to relate to someone of the opposite sex we need to learn to listen to communicate to care to uh, be able to love the person and do things that bless the person uh, and many men are not they don't understand communication. They don't understand how to share about themselves. They don't understand how to listen to people. They don't understand how to deal with problems. They only, when they find problems, they get frustrated and angry. So they, they're not prepared to date. So the church should train people to be able to relate to God and relate to people. Uh, when we train our Christians, it's not just teaching uh, how to be a Christian, how to love God. We also need to teach people how to love people, how to relate to people, how to care about people. And to care about people, we have to uh, say what the Bible says, you know, be uh, quick to listen. We want to listen to people and, and uh, mourn with those who cry and rejoice with those who rejoice. So we, that we rejoice with people, that we learn to feel the feelings of people and care about people. So they need to learn the difference between male and female and how to love and relate to someone of the opposite sex so how to care about them how to listen to them how to how to care about them and six he should learn the importance of building a godly family and how it, sh it would affect his whole life so that he has the motivation to follow god's will in seeking a spouse so he should learn the importance of building a godly marriage because it will affect his whole lifetime. Now, if you interview married couples, many couples will tell you, if you ask them individually, they will tell you, I wish I knew marriage is so important. I wish I knew my spouse better before I got married. Then I would not have married him or her because I've, I found that he or she has so many problems that I did not know and I just thought when I get married things will be better now things will not just get better automatically we need to be able to communicate and, and listen to their person and care about a person and solve problems together all this we need to learn so the church should teach people how to solve problems now the Bible does talk about solving problem with people for instance Matthew 18 if someone has offended you you first talk with the person and then you will if the person doesn't listen you find uh, two or three person and bring to this person and try to solve the problem if not then you tell the whole church and also the Bible talk about forgiveness be kind to people have compassion to people so we need to learn to relate to people and to love people so the husband need to love the wife as Christ has loved the church and to love someone as Christ loves the church is something hard to learn so Christians should learn to love to love means I want to give to the person I want to bless the person I want to do things that will please the person and make the person live a happy life that we live a happy life and a joyful life and a life that is pleasing to God together that is loving the person loving now many people think that loving the person is hugging and kissing and having sex it's not just that L loving person is really doing things to please and bless the person and appreciate the person so we need to understand that it will affect the whole lifetime so we want to follow God's will because God is the only one that has everything in 
in control. So if we follow his plan, then our whole life will be blessed. Now, if you talk with any couple, and the husband and wife separately, they will tell you, yes, I, uh, I, 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 I've seen many problems now. I wish I knew. And uh, so we can learn from them and say, yes, I want to. I want to uh, work on myself first. I want to work on myself so that I can relate to people, I can listen to people, respond to people, care about people, and then solve problems with people. And I have more wisdom to relate to people and, and understand people, to discern people. It's very important that we learn to discern people. Now some people, they are selfish. Uh, but still, many people marry selfish people. They think it's no, no problem. Sometimes they think, I have no choice. I cannot, you know, they, they think that I cannot uh, stay single. I have to find this person. But, um, okay, now I see this uh, Washington Center message says log in to sign up to view. Now, so you log in with your email and then you can, you can view, okay? So we, um, so we want to be able to, you know, discern people and then selfish people should learn to change the behavior, change the heart before they get married. Selfish people after they get married only, will only ruin the marriage. People who have serious emotional problems should not get married. Now many people don't like to hear this. They say, well, don't emotional people have the rights to? Yes, they have the right to, but they first want to work on the marriage, when, uh, on the uh, emotions. If a person is always unhappy, always complaining, always blaming other people, always get angry and depressed, when he get married, he, he is torturing his spouse. And it's difficult to relate to someone who's always angry, who yells at him easily and get depressed easily. It's very difficult. It's very painful. And also marriage is binding because God's will is that once we are married, we don't divorce. We don't divorce except for adultery. If the person has committed adultery, if not for that, we don't divorce. So is binding so we want to find someone who is who has work on his life and want to change his life so there should be teaching about this that we all should learn to work on our lives to build up our lives if we want to enjoy life if we want to enjoy the blessings of god if we want to be blessed by god so we teach people with with grace now i've taught this before to motivate motivate people by grace what does that mean? Now first I will say what is motivation by the law. Now we should not motivation motivate people by the law. Motivation by the law is like this. You have to do this. You have to love people. You have to care about people. You have to take care of your sins. You have to obey God. You have to pray. You have to read the Bible. Now all this is true. But then if people just hear, I have to do this, I have to do that. It's just always responsibilities. But we should motivate people to follow God like this. We can say, God has a wonderful plan for us. He has a wonderful plan written in heaven. And then when we love Him and obey Him, and then we can enter His plan. When we dedicate our body as a living sacrifice and do not be conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewal of the mind, then we can discern the perfect, good and perfect, pleasing will of God. And then when we follow that will, it will please us and it will please God and it will be a perfect plan and and then your whole life is blessed by God and do you want your life to be blessed by God do you want to enjoy marriage now many people they rush into sex and rush into marriage because they say wow this one this person really loves me and I want to marry the person and then they later find out that the person really doesn't love him the person is just wants to find a spouse the person because he wants to find a spouse, so he would do everything to please us. So we want to discern this and to find out about the person and relate to the person 
uh, not in a sexual way, but in communication, in caring, in uh, taking care of different problems to find out if the person is the right person for us. And if the person is not the right person, it's better to separate. And when we separate from someone, it's better that we ask a pastor or a leader to bless both persons so that both persons are not hurt. Both persons will still care about each other, pray for each other, and can stay in the same church. Then it won't split up uh, the two persons. That Some people, after they separate, they don't want to go to the same church church again so we don't want to hurt each other when we say uh, uh, perhaps it's not God's will for us to be together okay and then teachings relating related to dating 